many happy returns is brought to you by Tang, the instant breakfast drink, Jell-O gelatin, and Post cereals in new compact boxes, all fine products of general food. Post Toasty's Corn Flakes, fresh as a sun-ripe ear of corn. Flaked and quick toasted, crackling out loud with fresh corn flavor. That's Post Toasties. Post Toasties. I'm so particular about my coffee, I make it myself. Make it a new way, by the pot. Using instant Maxwell House. Only one with this recipe. Use one teaspoon per cup. Add water, cold water. Bring all those to a boil. Let it steep for a moment. Now do it my way, see? You like it. Instant Maxwell House, now so much richer in flavor, you can make it by the pot. understand why we have to come in a half hour early just to meet the new manager. I don't argue. Since I've been working in the complaint department, I've learned not to complain. Well, it doesn't look as if he's here yet. And I don't like to stand around doing nothing. So how about a coffee break? On our own time, the union would murder us. Gee, I hope the new manager's a nice man. Oh, a nice single man, of which I'm beginning to think the world is fresh out of. That may be him coming into the parking lot. Well, I must say, this is the most impressive first view of my staff. <laughs> That's better. Now, if you will please stand together. Thank you. Since I hope we're going to be together for a long time, I took the liberty of asking you to report earlier than usual this morning. It has always been my policy to know my staff and have them know me. My name is Walter Burnley. I have been for 12 years the head of the same department in our Manhattan store. I am a widower, business school graduate. I arrived last night, and I'm staying with my daughter, her husband, and my six-year-old grandchild. Now, you, miss. Lynn Hall. Three years ladies' apparel, one year sportswear, four years here, high school graduate, single, but not reconciled to it. <laughs> Harry Price, nine years bargain basement, one year of business for myself with my brother-in-law, five years back in bargain basement, three years complaint department, a member of the bowling team, and married and have eight children. Wilma Fritter, seven years fashion model. <laughs> Unfortunately, my figure changed a little faster than the fashions. <laughs> Joe Foley. Uh, 30 years old, bachelor, four years at Columbia Medical College. <laughs> Parking attendant. Three years, head shipper at Amalgamated Shipping Company. Amalgamated? Yeah, amalgamated, you know, together. <laughs> Mr. Foley, where did you learn to speak English? What do you mean, where? English is my mother tongue. Are you sure you know who the father is? Huh? Mr. Foley, the success of our department depends in great measure on our ability to communicate with our customers. Good diction is important. Now, let me hear you say, Croc Myers appreciates your patronage. Croc Myers appreciates... Not a per, a pre, a pre. A per, a per. No, no, no. Pre, pre, pre. Pre, pre, pre. <laughs> the tongue is prostrate on the palate. <laughs> What's the matter? I'm strangling. That's what you were doing to the language. Now, let's try it from the top again. Croc Myers appreciates your patronage. Croc Myers appreciates your patronage. 
You got to the goal line and fumbled. <laughs> Never mind, I'm sure that with a little practice, your diction will improve. Don't be discouraged. No, I ain't discouraged. I don't let these things praise me. <laughs> I like appreciate better. <laughs> Mr. Burnley? I'm Walter Burnley. I am J.L. Fox, the manager of this store. May we go into your office? If you wish. Carry on. First of all, Mr. Burnley, let me welcome you to California. Thank you, Mr. Fox. And now that the amenities are over, I want you to know that I have done everything in my power to keep you from being transferred here. Oh? Unfortunately, the board of directors overruled me, but they have not had the last word. I would ask you to sit down, but I don't know how long I'm staying. <laughs> to what, may I ask, do I owe this rousing welcome? Burnley, you are a maverick. Oh, I know you had a successful department in New York, but in so doing, you broke every rule and regulation in our book. Well, I had to have something to go by. You will find I am a man who believes in rules and regulations. That's how I run my store. And I believe that customers are more than mere numbers on a charger plate. They are human beings, torn by two equally powerful emotions, one to buy and the other to immediately return what they've bought. Sometimes they need reassurance, and this can only be done by the application of human psychology. Human psychology, my foot. My foot, Mr. Fox. What? You're standing on it. <laughs> I warn you, Burnley, should there be any dissatisfied customers or an increase in refunds, you will find yourself back in New York two hours before your plane gets there. Do I make myself clear? Very clear. Good day, Burnley. <laughs> Mr. Fox. What is it, Burnley? Let's have an understanding. At Christmas time, you and I will not exchange gifts. <laughs> this is Burnley speaking. I wish to see my entire staff in my office immediately. This is an emergency. And that is the situation as it stands. Well, don't worry, Mr. Burnley. We won't let you down. None of us are exactly crazy about Mr. Fox. Mm. He's the one put in that rule, you're only allowed six inches on the roller towel. <laughs> We're all behind you, Mr. Burnley. You bet. Thank you, I appreciate your spirit. But in order to show you how psychology can eliminate refunds, I will demonstrate on the first customer who comes in. <laughs> Yes, but may I know what the trouble is? I'm a housekeeper, and the lady I work for told me to buy a whistling tea kettle, so I bought this one, and I don't like it. Strange. You look like the sort of woman who's accustomed to being whistled at. <laughs> Thank you. Now, uh, just what seems to be wrong with this tea kettle? This kettle whistles like this. And the maid next door bought one of Toby's that whistles like this. Do you mean to say that you prefer a kettle that whistles to one that goes... Why not? Well, you're a lover of classical music, aren't you? Oh, yes, I never miss Lawrence Welk. Do you realize that this tea kettle is practically whistling the opening movement of Beethoven's Fifth? Really? publicize it. We couldn't keep up with the demand. You can trust me. Of course, if you'd rather have a rock and roll tea kettle, I'd be glad to refund you. Oh, I wouldn't think of it. Beethoven? Oh, wait till I tell my friends. <laughs> Any questions? You may take over. <laughs> back like this. See the difference? When you go to Florida, you'll be spending $30 a day for a room. Now wear this bikini. 
give yourself a fighting chance. Lady, this toy ain't too advanced for a five-year-old boy. These things are all figured out scientifically and will teach the youngster how to meet the problems of life. All he has to do is learn to get the right pegs in the right holes. Like this. This one goes in here. That one goes in there. Science can be fun. This one goes in there. No, it don't go in there. It goes in here. Oh, I got the wrong peg. That's the one that'll fit in there. That goes in there. No, it doesn't go in there. Oh, it doesn't go in there. It must go someplace. Fit in there, you. Would you like a refund, lady? Please. A crock Myers appreciates your fraternage. <laughs> too big. <laughs> I try to squeeze it in there. Hurt my finger. <laughs> Said appreciates right, didn't I? <laughs> you're not angry? You're okay. Actually, Mr. Foley, I'm delighted with the work that you and my staff have done here. And according to these records, we've made fewer refunds than any day in the last six months. So keep up the good work. Mr. Fox may yet have to eat that return ticket to New York. Okay, Mr. Burnley. And I'll be glad to bring the knife and fork. <laughs> <laughs> Holy smoke, someone's returned in our warehouse. <laughs> I think I'd better handle this. May I help you, miss? Thank you. I'd like to return all this. <laughs> Excuse me, would you uh, come into my office, please? You wish to return all these? Yes, please. Thank you. Okay, ma'am. Uh, when did you buy them? Eleven days ago. Oh, well, uh, you know the store rules. No refund on merchandise after ten days. Please, I spend every cent I have in the world. Why did you buy these things if you don't want them? I did want them. I think these are the most beautiful clothes I've ever seen. Now I never want to see them again. This was to have been my trousseau. Well, I, I'm sorry about that, miss, but... but we're running a business here. If I were to give you a refund on all this, I'd, I'd lose my job. Uh, excuse me, I'll arrange for one of our porters to take these down to a cab. <laughs> Please, Miss... Uh... I love him so. But what made him call off the wedding? He didn't, I did. Why? I told you I love him. Then why don't you get married? Well, because we wouldn't be happy. Who says so? His mother. His mother? <laughs> well, she doesn't think I'm good enough for her son. Not good enough? Well, well she's very aristocratic, and I'm... And I'm just... <laughs> no. <laughs> Please, I need anger, Third floor notions. <laughs> Money. I'm afraid I've made a fool of myself. Please forgive me. Uh, Miss Jones, uh, how many dresses are there in your trousseau? About 20. Have you thought of eloping? No, I want my marriage to be right. And I know we couldn't be happy unless Bill's mother approved. I better go. Just a moment, Miss Jones. Would you would you leave the packages here? Well, but without 
Hmm. Well, perhaps I could help you. Well, no one can help me. Please, let me have until tomorrow to, to, to talk to this woman. But it won't do any good. Please, let me try. <laughs> now, where can I find her? Well, here's her card, but I think you're wasting your time. I may soon have plenty of time. <laughs> now, here's my home phone number in case you want to get in touch with me. Oh, thank you. You're very kind. But what will you tell her? That's a good question. I wish I knew the answer. <laughs> Coconut has changed. Now Baker's has a new moistness secret that makes angel flakes so moist and tender your fingers can feel the difference when you take it from the package. You can taste the difference in macaroons. Angel flakes so moist tasting to begin with, it actually stays moister longer than fresh coconut. From the very first bite, the moistness lasts and lasts and lasts until the very last bite. See? Every shred still moist and chewy. New Baker's Angel Flake is so moist tasting to begin with, it stays moister longer than fresh coconut. Another fine Baker's product from General Foods. There's Daddy. Let's see, we better wash those hands and get ready for dinner, huh? Okay. Hey, here's Susie. You better put her to bed. She has to be fed. What's wrong with her? She wet when she's supposed to cry. <laughs> well, we can't have that, can we? Hi, darling. Hi, honey. How was the law business today? Sensational. Three traffic violations, but the rest are all small cases. <laughs> when you talk like that, I know you feel good, so suppose you help me with the salad. I was afraid it would come to that. Where's Lori? In her bedroom. She has a problem with her doll I'd rather not discuss. <laughs> you know, I've been wondering. Your dad's been a widower for the past ten years, right? Do you think that he's interested in what we uncouthly refer to as lay femme? Now, why do you ask a question like that? Well, when I was talking to him last night, I got the feeling that he was kind of lonely. Well, he was very devoted to Mother, but I'm sure after ten years... No, I'm not sure. Why don't we find out? Bob! There's Dad. Now remember, Bob, no probing. Hi, kids! Oh, hello, Dad. How are you? Joan? Hi, Walter. Well, I'll at the store. Just fine, just fine. Oh, Joan, I'm sorry I won't be able to stay for dinner. Oh, why not? Well, I have a very important engagement. Is my new black suit pressed? Oh, yes, it's in your closet. Fine. Oh, by the way, Bob, do you mind if I use your aftershave lotion? I didn't have a chance to do any shopping. Sure, sure. Help yourself. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, I'd better get ready. Uh, I want to look my best. By the way, kids, don't wait up for me. I may be rather late tonight. <laughs> best suit, aftershave lotion, out late tonight. He's only been here one day, and he's doing better than I did in my first six months, and I was in the Navy. It seemed like that. The daughter is always the last to know. I'll get it. Hello? This is Susan Jones. I'd like to speak with Mr. Burnley. Oh, he's in the shower right now. May I take a message? Yes. Please tell him that I don't think it'll work. You uh, don't think it'll work? He'll know what I mean. He's the sweetest, kindest, most wonderful man I've ever met, but I don't think there's a chance. Just say it's probably best that the wedding's called off. Wedding? <laughs> Did you say wedding? Yeah, that's right. Tell him I'm heartbroken now, but, but I know I'll get over it. After all, I'm only 21. 21? <laughs> oh, no, wait. Hello? Hey, 21. <laughs> Honey, I only heard half of that conversation. Uh, what's that all about? Imagine Dad wanting to marry a 21-year-old girl. I can't believe it. Oh, honey, I can. I'm a country boy, and I found out a long time ago that the oldest roosters always go for the youngest hens. 21 years old? It could be worse. She could be 18. Pop, do you think I should try and talk to him before he goes out? Honey, please, relax. Now, you're getting worried over nothing. Your father is probably just... 
Do either of you know where 248 Clark Avenue is? Yeah, it's in Westwood. Dad, a Miss Susan Jones called and said the wedding is definitely off. She can't possibly mean it. But she says it's for the best because she's so young. Age is not important. When two people love each other, that's all that matters. Dad, wait. Can't we talk this over? Not now. I started this thing and I'm going to see it through. <laughs> Mrs. Wentworth? Yes. How do you do? I'm Susan Jones' uncle, just arrived from Boston. Oh? I don't believe Susan ever mentioned having an uncle in Boston. The dear, reticent child. She doesn't like to boast about her family. <laughs> the name is Carter Phelps Phipps. <laughs> Thank you. I was just about to have a cup of tea. Will you join me? Delighted. Oh, you have a charming place here. <coughs> a simple, but uh, charming. <laughs> Thank you. I don't believe I know the name. Phelps Fitch. Astonishing. We're one of the founding families of Boston. Really? Great-grandmother was a Sanders. She married a Withers. Grandmother was a Sanders Withers. She married a Phelps. Mother was a Withers Phelps. Now, great-grandfather was a Phipps. He married a Huggins. Grandfather was a Huggins Phipps. He married a Carruthers, father was a Carruthers Phipps. Father married mother, Withers Phelps, Carruthers Phipps. Therefore, I'm Phelps Phipps. But you may call me Carter. Strange, I don't recall your name in the social register. We have an unlisted page. <laughs> now, about the wedding of your son and my favorite niece. Oh, haven't you heard? The wedding is off. Off? You don't seem to stare. On the contrary, I was a little concerned that my niece might be marrying beneath her. Beneath? <laughs> Excuse me. Mary, bring the tea over here, please. Thank you, Sam. I would like you to know that both civically and socially, in California, my family has enjoyed unquestioned precedence. I have been chairman of more committees that... There's something wrong. I have never seen a more beautiful painting. But you're so close. One can never get too close to good art. Excuse <laughs> me. Mary, what's going on here? Ma'am, I'm sure I know that man. She does not. <laughs> he works in the complaint department of Crockmeyer's department store. Are you sure? Positive. He's the one who told me my tea kettle whistled like Beethoven. Remember? <laughs> Go away. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. You may go. Well, Mr. Phelps Phipps, or whatever your name is, what did you hope to gain by perpetrating this ridiculous fraud? I hope to gain something very important. The happiness of two people. Will you please leave immediately? Not until I say what I have to say. Perhaps I am a fraud, Mrs. Wentworth, but I'm afraid in your own way you're one too. What? How can you let family pride keep your son and a lovely girl from happiness. I don't believe that is any concern of yours. Yes, it is. Just what is so special about your family that allows you to look down on others. Now, your grandfather here, who founded the family fortunes, a very famous man, I've read about him. How did he get his wealth? He discovered oil while digging a grave for his pet mule. <laughs> yes. No, I'm not finished yet. Now, your sister here, she's in all the society columns. She's a countess, but it cost your father a half a million dollars to buy the count. I will not let you say these things about my family. Mrs. Wentworth, don't misunderstand me. Family is very important, but it's only when you have them around you, loving you and caring about you. All that may be true, but my son... Ah, your son is the clue to all this. You're afraid of losing him. You're clinging to him when you have no right to. That's not true. Of course it's true. I know it because I went through the same thing myself. Mrs. Wentworth, I'm a widower. When my wife passed away, my daughter was all I had. I clung to her desperately. When she married and came out here to live, I thought I'd lost everything. But I found out I'd gained much more than I'd lost. My daughter's happiness, a wonderful family. 
a grandchild. Mrs. Wentworth, don't you want grandchildren? Of course I do. Well, then you can't do it with pictures. You're going to need Susan's help. <laughs> well, I don't know very much about Susan. All you have to know about Susan is that she loved your son enough to call off this wedding rather than jeopardize his happiness or yours. She called off the marriage? That's right. And she tried to prevent me from coming here tonight. She's probably home right now, crying her eyes out. Mrs. Wentworth, why don't you call her? Mrs. Wentworth, your descendants are waiting. <laughs> <laughs> Glass for glass, Tang has more vitamin C. Tang is not a juice or juice product, but the instant breakfast drink with natural orange flavor. And glass for glass, Tang is more economical than orange juice. Next time, get Tang in the familiar seven ounce size, with a week's supply for a family of two. And now, in the new, bigger, one pound, two ounce size, a week's supply for a family of four. Or, the new, bigger, one pound, 11 ounce size, a week's supply for a family of six. Are you a friend of the bride or the groom? Neither. I'm a friend of the store. <laughs> Many Happy Returns has been brought to you by Tang, the instant breakfast drink, Jell-O gelatin, and instant Maxwell House coffee, all fine products of General Foods. Sure and watch Gomer Pyle, USMC, with Jim Neighbors every Friday night over most of these stations.